Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg had a conversation with Dr. Anthony Fauci of the National Institute for Allergy and Infectious Diseases yesterday. They talked about a wide range of issues. Zuckerberg said that he thinks the U.S. has made some missteps on its attempt to fight coronavirus. And Fauci talked about the quest for a vaccine. We should know as we get into the mid to late fall, early winter, but probably late fall, whether we have candidates that really are safe and effective. And I hope and anticipate that we will have one or more. If that's the case, by the time we get to the end of this year, the beginning of calendar year 2021, we may have vaccine one or more candidate that is actually safe and effective. To talk more about this, let's bring in Dr. Mark Poznanski. He's director of the Vaccine and Immunotherapy Center at Massachusetts General Hospital. He's joining us from Boston. And he is also working with a company called ha uh, Halovax on developing a vaccine. Dr. Poznanski, thank you for being here. Um, there was a, a recent article shared by the American Council on Science and Health that looked at the success rate of various types of drugs once they go through uh, clinical trials. And they found for uh, vaccines that there was about a 33% success rate of, of various drugs that were approved after going through the process. Um, so do you agree that, I mean, what's your optimism level? Obviously you're working on one yourself, um, but do you think that there is a high likelihood that we will get some a vaccine that's highly effective uh, by the end of the year or going into next year? Well, I think, I think the key thing is that uh, you know, Dr. Fauci has uh, privileged information beyond what you know I can read, uh, but I would say that if he's optimistic, then he's he's a great speaker of truth on the on on the issue of the science and vaccine development. I would say that he has a good view on being optimistic, and I would say that given the success rates of vaccines, there's a that there's that type of chance that we do have a safe and effective vaccine by uh, the timeline that he talked about. However, there's always the caution because of the fact that we're developing a vaccine for a virus that we don't fully understand the immune response to and what we need to create in terms of that immune response to protect individuals from the disease. And I think the other important point is protect those individuals who are at most risk for the serious uh, components of the, you know, the ser serious consequence of the disease. And I think but vaccines will be tested in young people, obviously, and that makes a lot of sense with regards to take, you know, their safety profile uh, and efficacy. But in the end, we'll want to see the efficacy of those in people who are 60 and above or people who have pre-existing conditions. And that's a more complicated story, which may not be settled science uh, in the beginning of uh, 2021. And I think we just have to be always informed by data and science as opposed to opinion and anecdote. And I think that Dr. Fauci would agree that in the end, we'll be sitting here in 2021 with a lot of data and we'll be able to state, is this safe and efficacious? And if it is efficacious, is it gonna be effective in those people who would be otherwise most affected by the serious consequences of the virus? And I just go on to say, you know, one element of the whole vaccine development, which I know, uh, is something that people are more increasingly aware of is the diverse immune response that you may need to protect you, not just antibodies, but also these sort of T cell responses. And that's where Halovax comes in because our vaccine platform is a second generation approach, first generation trying to get to antibodies, second generation getting a more balanced B cell, T cell, antibody T cell type of response. And we think that it's important to have those second generation vaccines like Halovax in development, just in case that we're in 2021 in the beginning and we say it might be safe, but it may not be effective enough, these first generations, and we do need a second generation in, in place to address that. And that wouldn't be a surprise in many ways. So it sounds like we still have a long way to go. I mean, you know, my, my question is, even after there is a vaccine that's developed, how quickly can that scale up? You know, we, we've had a number of companies on that have said that they have already started to build out in anticipation of a quick scale up when in fact that vaccine is available. But um, how have you seen that expand over the last several months? Well, I think, I think we've, we've learned a great lesson from 
from uh, the whole testing realm. So we've scaled up testing, but you can see how long that took. And it's still taking time to scale up testing across the nation. So what, what I'm saying is you can develop a safe and effective vaccine and you can produce it in large quantities, just like tests are now being produced in large, large quantities. But its deployment across the nation is another huge challenge. I'm not an expert in vaccine deployment, but there are many people across the globe who are, and they would always recognize the challenge of having developed large quantities of the vaccine. How do you actually administer it safely and effectively across a whole nation to mi millions of people. Uh, you may have millions of doses of a vaccine sitting in a refrigerator somewhere, but how do you get it to all the other refrigerators all over the country and then get people to come up and get their vaccine? So that, that's another very significant challenge. And we've seen it, as I've said, in testing. We now have lots of testing kits, lots of tests out there, but there's still an issue of deployment across the nation at a level that covers the nation effectively week on, week out, uh, in every place across the country. Um, and Dr. Bosnaski, finally, you mentioned um, that the vaccine you're working on should in theory be more efficacious than a first generation. What does more efficacious mean? What, what's a target efficacy that you want to see for your vaccine, but not only that, what's sort of the minimum efficacy that that these that any vaccine should have in order to come to public and and be um, be administered to people? Well, that that's a great question because that you know what is the vaccine target? In the first, you could say the first realm of that is that the vaccine helps to modify the disease. So severe disease becomes moderate disease, moderate disease becomes mild disease, mild disease ends up with you not even knowing that you had the disease. So you can imagine that being a game changer for people with severe and moderate disease, that now that is reduced in its frequency. And so people, if they get the disease, they're either asymptomatic or they have a mild disease. A vaccine could actually affect that change and that would be a significant benchmark. The next level is obviously that you vaccinate people and they don't get the disease. They're either completely asymptomatic they might have a few minor side effects of the vaccine itself, but otherwise they wouldn't have even known that they got the disease. And I think so these two elements of how vaccines are targeted are very relevant. If, if in the first generation you have a vaccine that maybe just modifies the severity of disease, that would be a significant effect in its own right. And it would have to do that. I think it comes back to the first one. It would have to do that in the population of people over 60 or those people with other illnesses where they were at increased risk of severe disease and now the vaccine takes away that risk. That would be a significant impact of a vaccine in the first generation. Right. What Haley Vaccine would want to do is obviously prevent the disease altogether and give you a good memory response that is long and you know extends over several years. I mean, that's the sort of dream vaccine that you have it a couple of times and then you, you know you're protected for five to 10 years. That's right. what we're right. aiming for in Halovax. Well, we wish you luck in those efforts and all the other folks who are trying to work on these vaccines. Dr. Mark Poznanski is director of the Vaccine and Immuni Immunotherapy Center at Massachusetts General Hospital. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed.